So, I think it's quite obvious by now that something strange is happening with the cases in CSGO. About two weeks ago, this strange market activity started happening where cases all of a sudden began to rise in their value, and not only two or three specific cases, but we are also talking about nearly all of them. If you guys will take even a closer look at a random case of your choice, very easily you will find out that they are also having a strange straight line pattern at specific hours during the day following by a dip. Now I don't know about you guys, but that's not the first time I'm seeing such activity going on in the market. This story takes us about 3 years ago in 2018, where the most popular game at the time was PUBG, which was the catalyst for the battle royale type of games like Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone, and even CSGO Danger Zone mode. Needless to say, back in those days, PUBG had about 3 million players at the same time, with over 50 million copies sold, so the community of the game was quite big. Perhaps you cannot see it so clearly nowadays because Valve aggregated its market data to be more efficient, but for everyone who's been around in 2018, you would have seen the exact same behavior we see in CSGO cases in all of those popular PUBG items. Steady lines followed by a dip in specific offline hours. I don't have any intentions to offend anyone with what I'm about to say in this video, so please be mindful of that and I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. Can we agree on the statement that during PUBG Prime days, the Chinese community really kicked in? The community of gaming in China is insanely large, and I'm not an expert on this topic, but there is a culture of what's been called internet cafe or gaming bars in China. So just for the sake of better understanding, google it for yourself and you will realize how ridiculously insane it is. In some of these places you can even rent a room to take a nap. Starting from 2012, a Chinese company called Perfect World, known for its multiple MMORPG games, started to collaborate with Valve for exclusive rights to market and distribute Dota 2 in China. Fast forward to 2018, they declared that they will create what is called Steam China, and Valve accepted that. This is how important the Chinese community for Valve. It has only a limited amount of games like CSGO and Dota 2, which by the way Steam China already launched in February of 2021. I even heard that when you sign up for games like League of Legends for example, you are using your own ID, and if you are getting banned from the game, you have no other way to create an account legally since it's linked to your own freaking ID. I just cannot ignore the fact that whenever I browse through the different cases and waiting for the activity log to pop, you can easily catch multiple Chinese profiles buying those cases in large quantities, especially during the peak hours. But you know, that's not all of it. The punchline here is that the vast majority of them are not interested to invest in those cases. They are actually unboxing them. I do want to mention that this movement is not only caused by the Asian community alone, just like I stated in my previous videos, you will also come across many profiles with multiple accounts made just to buy items on a large scale. The community of Russia is involved, other European countries, United States. What I am trying to say here is that those are the main communities that cause this activity rather if they are here to invest or to unbox. It's kind of funny to see how it evolved too. I don't think any of you should neglect the fact that many people use the Steam market in malicious ways. When PUBG rolled out their policy to cancel trading, the game absolutely crashed, because they realized that many people abused that system. At the same exact month in 2018, Valve also rolled out their own policy of trade locks into CSGO, with the same exact reasoning of avoiding frauds and scams. So what the community did? they turned into Dota 2, because it had no trade locks, and that's the main reason why items like the Dragon Claw Hook, the most famous item in Dota 2 among the average gamer, was worth about $600. It has been used as a currency to transfer money. But what do you know, about halfway through 2020, Dota 2 rolled out its own trade lock policy that crushed their economy. For those who heard about the fact that I'm trying to build my own marketplace site, TF2, which is the game I must thank for helping me to start out this journey over Steam at the age of 13, is the only game that hasn't rolled out any trade lock policy just yet. So we must try to understand the complexity of the community market by understanding what kind of people use it. This is why I keep saying in these videos that there is a lot of serendipity in the community market, because 99% of the people who are using the market don't even know anything about the hidden communities within it. Those are the claps where you are not invited. And to be frank with you, I'm aware of some of them. So I think it's important to keep that in mind whenever you listen to a random piece of advice given to you by someone. 
So regards to the current situation of the market, I think it's a mix of excess amount of unboxing thanks to public figures that turned it into a trend, and people who are here to invest or fearing to miss out on the opportunity to make money, so they hold a large portion of the cases that don't drop as frequent as they used to be anymore. I don't really want to dive too deep into the topic of NFTs, and I'm not necessarily suggesting any connection between the two, but in-game skins may be considered as some sort of NFT, which is extremely popular these days. That's just an interesting topic to get educated about, and I encourage you to google it for yourself if you are interested to know more about it. I think it can really help you to realize the psychology behind skins better. So let's get into the more tactical side of it about the cases. Again, I hope no one buys the keys from the Steam community market, and instead they purchase it from the in-game store. If you live in a country where the in-game store is banned, just leave it to be as it is, I truly think that Valve and politics have done you a favor to some extent. About a month ago I released a video where I revisited my 8 months old case investment including 22,825 different cases, but mainly Danger Zone, Spectrum 2 and Shattered Web cases. Since then I only got rid of the CS20 and my glove cases, which never really was a big portion of the total amount so I guess it isn't that awful. If you haven't checked that video I will leave a link in the description. Back then I was making about $500 from Spectrum 2, losing $210 from the Shattered Web, and ironically enough I was making only $2 from my 11,000 Danger Zone cases. We obviously must figure out how much they're worth right now. Just almost one month later and multiple spectacular occurrences over the Steam market turned my old investment into a total of $1,350 in gross profit. The baseline of that investment given the prices for which I bought the cases for was almost $2,000 worth of cases, and yet the Shattered Web case is still a loss. The other day someone commented if it was really worth buying the cases. Well, from the money perspective of course it was, there was no other way for me to lose in here. I bought the cases way before people got excited about them, and I'm having an extremely good buy point in all of those cases besides the Shattered Web. But let's not be confused. To turn it back into Steam Wallet Cash, you need to spend an ungodly amount of time. I would say more than full 20 hours to list them all manually. And please stop giving me examples for extensions to do that process, I'm talking about the real deal here, okay? The mobile confirmation. Now, is this process can be automated? Sure it can. Does it put your account at risk because you expose its secrets? Yeah. I'm not planning to get rid of mine and a huge part of it is thanks to laziness. I still cannot imagine going through 22,000 cases single confirming over my phone. So yeah, it was worth it, but still very time consuming, much more than people think. I understand the conversation that people are having about if you invested the $1,000 into it, you would have gained so much money, but let's be real dude, you were had to deploy some coding around it to make it relevant. It's not as simple as it may sound to you, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure that a lot of people are doing it as well. But let's not be naive about it. What about investing in it right now? Is it still worth it? Will the prices of the cases continue to ascend or will it eventually fall out? There is never an easy way of answering such questions. Needless to say that for people who want to buy, let's say, $1,000 worth of cases is a completely different conversation than someone who has $30. For that, you will need to deploy some infrastructure around it to make your life easier, otherwise you will suffer. I did not click 2000 times just to put my cases into storage units, be sure in that. The path that CSGO cases will be taken through is totally predicated on how the game can maintain its popularity among the unboxing community. I'm pretty sure that perhaps people got money to spend it on cases, but very quickly they will realize that this is not sustainable and we will see a dip in price sooner or later, that's just inevitable. Most of the cases that increased in their price were also slightly harder to obtain, so it definitely was easier for them to grow over time. But with that being said, we still cannot deny the fact that the Danger Zone case, for instance, that had more than 1 million listings, got to such extremely low levels in just a matter of 2 weeks. I think more than half of it just vanished. If I were to buy any case, it would definitely be the ones that cost the cheapest, just so I can put myself on the green profitable side as soon as possible. This investment is super risky. If you do want to invest a large amount of money into it, I wouldn't jump into that even if it can be profitable. That's just hard investment to handle in a large quantities, and still we have an amazing opportunities just around the corner like the Broken Fang sale. I will even be more specific, if the cases continue to rise for the next week, I will even start to sell some of mine and cash them out. The cases are a complete insanity that is difficult to maintain. 
For those who have been wondering, I believe we will get to see a sale going on for the Broken Fang operation at the beginning of April. Who knows, maybe it will even have any correlation to the RMR capsules in-game, but overall I'm excited to see how it will go down. I already bought an op fade as an investment and I'm making about $100 out of it right now. We should talk more about the Broken Fang in a different video though. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful weekend, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you for supporting my channel, leave your like, leave some feedback, and I will get back to them all. Take care, talk to you soon.